like, you guys, this episode is just F.O. heavy. It's F.O. crazy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the seventh episode of the Mace of Skeins podcast. My name is Macy, and this is my little corner of YouTube where I talk all things knitting, sometimes crochet, and whatever crafty thing I happen to be doing this week. So if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for clicking my channel again and keep coming back to see whatever content I'm pumping out. If you are a new viewer, thank you for clicking my channel. Thanks for subscribing, and I hope you like what you see. Okay, so the last video I posted, I want to just right off the bat say thank you and sorry to everyone that one that if I might have offended by saying about the the birdhouses and stuff but I really want to say thank you to the people who reached out and told me that it was a terrible idea I had no idea from what uh, the other podcasts that I've watched where they talked about putting their old fiber bits into the birdhouses I just automatically assumed that they knew what they're talking about and it was a good idea but clearly they didn't so thank you for the people who reached out telling me that it was a bad idea and it was unsafe for birds to put old yarn scraps into their birdhouses. So if this is your first time watching my channel and you have no idea what I'm talking about, last episode I was saving my yarn scraps and I was going to put them into a birdhouse so a bird can use them to make their nest look pretty and so they wouldn't have to go and find a bunch of yarn bits. Turns out that it can get caught around their legs, it can cut off circulation, they can swallow it, it can get tight in their intestines. Bad idea. I had no idea. So thank you to the people who reached out, sent me links to like wildlife research and everything like that. So I am, I emptied the birdhouse that I was putting the scraps in and I threw it all away. So if you heard my last video and you decided that you were going to do the same thing, don't. Take the yarn scraps out of your birdhouse right now. Don't make the mistake that I did. Luckily my birdhouse was just decoration so no birds actually got harmed in it. But <laughs> I'm glad you guys told me because that could have been bad. So besides the bird talk, I'm actually surprised that this episode that I am doing today is like on track. Like I'm getting on a good rhythm of like every three and a half weeks. Well, the next episode I'm not going to be able to do for about like four and a half, maybe five weeks because I'm going on a cruise. So um, the time that I'll be gone would be the time that I would normally be recording another episode. So like right at the three week to three and a half week mark I will be uh, in the middle of the ocean so I can't record a podcast then but I will when I come back like two or three days after I come back I'll gather my stuff write some show notes and uh, record a podcast so this one is going to be the last one that you'll see for like almost a month so but just know that in a month it's gonna be a very like long heavy content fingers crossed episode so let me just tell you guys what we've been doing for the past like three weeks. Alex and I went to a horror festival. I mean, it wasn't really like a festival, but um, I said horror with an R. Um, it was at this uh, little museum. So they had uh, these booths set up. They had the lead girl from Sleepaway Camp. I want to say it's what it's called. I can't really remember. We didn't go to see her. We just like happened to go there and a horror festival was going on. But it was really cool in the parking lot. They had a ton of booths set up and it was just a bunch of indie people that had, uh, like they had painted a bunch of things of characters from old school horror movies and new horror movies. They had like the new It Clown on there. But they had one of my favorite bands, Ghost. They had like the pictures of the, the, the members of the band and I really wanted to get one but... Uh, it doesn't fit the decor of our apartment, so I didn't get one. But um, it was really cool because we went to the back where they had this little food area where you could just get some food and eat, and they had yarn bombed trees, which was awesome. So it was like both of our worlds combined. So Alex is really big into like the horror scene, films and everything. So this was like his kind of world, and then boop, there's a tree that's yarn bombed. So it was like both of us combining into one. I'll pop some pictures up. And if you don't know what yarn bomb is, it's where you knit or crochet like big pieces, bright colorful pieces, and you go in public somewhere and you tack them on there. So normally people do trees a lot or they do like chain link fences. London K is a really big, like she's a professional yarn bomber. So she, like she's got a book that's coming out soon. I have her crochet hooks. But she's, if you are curious what yarn bomb is, look up London K on Instagram. I'll, I'll pop her Instagram down below. But it's so cool. So you just get pieces of yarn, like things that you've made, like knit or crocheted, and you just wrap them around and like single crochet it together. 
and it makes absolutely beautiful things. So I was so happy that there was a yarn bomb tree! And uh, yeah, that just kind of made my day. So that's, I mean, other than that, we've just been chilling. I can't really think of any big life things that have happened since the last time I recorded. <laughs> But uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you could have seen like what's been going on. I probably have forgot to mention something. So if you want to keep in the loop of like what I'm doing in between podcasts, follow me on Instagram and like normally watch the stories and I post on there like every day so you can see what I'm doing. This already seems like weird to me because I normally record a podcast like early in the morning when the sun is not like beating down. But now since I have the little air conditioner, I haven't been like having to set an alarm to wake up early and record a podcast at like nine before the sun comes out. And so this is like the middle of the day. Like it's almost like, it's like one thirty, and it's just kind of weird. Cause I'm like, this is, this is not normal. So if it seems a little off, it's just my internal schedule is very confused right now. <laughs> but okay, enough about things that are like non-knitting. Let's talk about some things that have to do with yarn. So I got some stuff in the mail and I am so excited so by now, I probably talk about him every episode. You guys know my friend. Uh, his name is Zach. He's got the Stout Stitch podcast. If you crochet, go head over to his. He's about to hit 5,000 or he almost, he either already did or he's like super close to hitting 5,000. But he sent me something in the mail for my birthday. Check this out. So his husband makes project bags. I don't know if he's selling them, but he totally should because they're amazing. Look at this. It's my like this is this is my favorite color blue is like royal with like a little bit lighter so like a little lighter royal like I feel like this is like perfect royal and this is just a little bit lighter that is my favorite color blue and so he made a big ass like project bag this is totally sweater size and that's not all that he sent me oh it's a zipper bag by the way and it's gray on the inside it he needs to sell these he needs to have these in shops he needs to have them on Etsy like they are like so high quality and it's thick like it's not just like fabric it's I mean you can see kind of how thick that is it's like a it's a damn good project bag like I would buy this at a store it's amazing and he sent me yarn he totally didn't have to do this but look at this yarn it's called um, the brand is the budget knitter Will Sparger Hope I said that right. He's got, he sells his yarn on Etsy and you just do etsy.com slash shop slash the budget knitter. I'll put all the stuff on here. He's also got an Instagram too, but this colorway is called Ice Queen. It is 100% untreated, super fine merino, and it is 181 yards worsted weight. Look at this. I love this so much. I'll unskein it so you guys can see what it looks like. So look at that. It's got some like dark blue in it along with like sky blue. I have no idea what I'm gonna make with this, but it is so pretty and it's so soft. So I definitely wanna do something that's either gonna be like around my neck or a hat or something, but it's, uh, I have got two skeins of it. So if you guys have an idea of what to do with like a chunkier worsted weight, and it's this beautiful blue color, give me some ideas. Y'all did give me some ideas on what to do with my other blue. Um, singles that my knitting group gave me for my birthday. Somebody said a lacy cowl and I've been looking at that and I think I might do that. So y'all have good ideas. So if you've got an idea on what to do with 360 yards of worsted weight, like a chunky worsted, let me know because I love this color. Thank you, Zach. And that is not all. He also sent me this cake of yarn. Guys, look, look at that. Really? It's like an ombre. It's called Rainbow Rhapsody, but with a W. Rhapsody. The colorway is Teal of Fortune. And, and it is 918 yards. <coughs> and I'm guessing it's fingering weight. Yeah, it seems like it would be fingering weight. I don't know the number scales. It's a one. So I'm pretty sure that's fingering weight. But look at that! I have no idea what I'm going to make with this. I really want to make his um shawl that he has but this is fingering weight and his is a different size so i might have to like hold this together with something he is huge on cakes like the ombre cakes so i am now in his world and i see why he likes them so much but i love this it is such a pretty color and he is on point with this color scheme like look at this come on <laughs> he knows my colors 
And he also sent me, this is super cute, it says yarn is a lifestyle. And it is uh, like a yarn, how would I, how would I describe this? So like what you put in your stash, like you, you keep track of it on here. So you would, it says yarn name, yarn brand, and it's the size of it. How many, um, like how many you have, it says like skein slash ball amount. And then the weight, so it has grams, ounces, yards, and meters. You do the color number, uh, the quantity you have, the fiber content, lot number if it has one, the hook slash needle size, gauge, washing instructions, and additional notes. This is so helpful if you don't have a Ravelry account where you can just log all this in like online, you need to get a notebook like this because this will totally help you if you find a pattern you're like, hmm, what yarns can I use for this? Oh, I like this one. And look at these polka dots. How cute is that? So thank you, thank you, thank you, Zach. That was so sweet of you. I had no idea that, like I was not expecting anything in the mail. And then I got this box and I was like, what is this? And then I opened it. I was expecting it to be shoes that I had ordered in the mail. And I'm like, what is this? And then I opened it and I got so excited. So thank you. And here's his card, his super cute card. It says a stout stitch. I hope this is in focus. It's not focusing. And then it's got his info on the back. But I talked about him enough times that you guys probably already, <laughs> you probably already follow him. You probably already know who he is. But I've been keeping everything in this project bag. So I will remember to show it on the podcast. So now I can empty it, put the yarn in my stash, put this in my notebook section, and then I can start using this bag because I love it. Another thing that came in the mail, <gasps> Dee, you guys, my Duchess and Dragons. I'm doing a knit along with Christy Glass Knits, Asylum Fibers, and 144 Stitches. So Christy Glass kind of organizes the thing, or Michelle from 144 Stitches writes the pattern, and uh, Asylum Fibers dyes the yarn. I did it last year. They, I mean, I probably shouldn't do it because I'm not going to Rhineback, but it's for people who are going to Rhineback, which is also known as New York Sheep and Wool. And it's a knit along, so you guys wear, like you knit and you wear the shawl together and you like meet up in Rhineback in front of the apple cider donuts. And like you take a picture and it's super fun, but I'm not going to Rhineback, but I love all things Christy Glass, so I do it every year. So this, I keep this, I'm gonna lose my stitches. I just know I am. But I'll just, I guess I'll just take it off. So it came with this bag that says Duchess and Dragons, and it also came with an enamel pin. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, it's so small. Um, so it's like a dragon egg, and it says Duchess and Dragons on there. And for people who were curious, being like, is that a riff off of Dungeon and Dragons? Yes, it actually is. So the reason why it's named that is it's in Duchess County Fairgrounds and the theme is dragons. So it's like Duchess and Dragons. Yes, it's a play off of it. And yes, it's great. Um, and then it also came with a dragon stitch marker. I'll show you the project in just a second. So ignore that. But here's a little wooden dragon stitch marker. Last year it came with a little unicorn and I used that stitch marker. The bag, it's the same brand. How weird is this? It's Della Q, which is the same brand of the project bag that Alex got me for my birthday. Like I saw it and I was like, what? That's the same brand. So there's three colors that you can pick from. There's a dark green, uh, like this fiery red, and this color that I got, which is gumption. So it's like a teal with bits of yellow and lighter teal and seafoam green and like a mossy darker green. I think it's super, I don't have anything like it in my stash, so. I, I was pretty excited. And I know you guys are like, uh, you just knit the body of your soldatna in a color that looks exactly like this. Well, I bought this before I knit my soldatna. So before I had that, I didn't have any color that looked like this. But now I have another color that looks just like it. And it's paired with this, which is a mohair. And I don't know if it's gonna show up how like fuzzy this is, but it's, Literally, okay, I think you can see it. If I can get it up against my arm as a background, I think you can see it. You see how fuzzy that is? This is so incredibly soft, you guys. So soft. I mean, it's mohair, so of course it's soft. This is what it's gonna look like all together. Okay, I just, I'm just gonna need to hold one in one. So I'm knitting with both of these. I'm not, I don't think I'm holding them together. I haven't read through the whole entire pattern, but it's going to look, I don't want to show the pattern because it is paid for, but this is the other colorway, but it's going to look like this. So this is what the shawl looks like. This is just a close up. So it's going to be kind of like a big crescent shaped shawl and uh, I'm excited for it. 
I'm super excited. It's the Dragon County Shawl. If you're crocheting it, it's Dragon County with a C. And if you're knitting it, it's Dragon County with a K. So it is open to the public. Everybody can, I think the kits, I think they stop selling the kits like they cut off. But um, the colors, if you want to buy them, just buy themselves. Um, it is Gumption and DK, which is this green color. And this is on her Argog, Aragog, A-R-A-G-O-G. Uh, it's called Chard. It's her lace base, but it is uh, mohair. So if you guys want to get in on that, those are the colorway names. But this is the bag that I got. That's the pin. And then this is the yarn. And I did start it. But I literally started it like two days ago. And I worked on it for about maybe an hour-ish. And then I cooked dinner. And I completely forgot about it. But this is what it looks like so far. <laughs> I've gotten so much done on this. But oh, that does look good up against my skin tone. I was afraid that this color wasn't going to look good. But it does. So uh, it's really weird the way that you start it. Yes, I know all of y'all just looked at that and you're like, you have a huge hole. Actually, uh, that hole, I didn't, I mean, I messed up on all of it. That is what's supposed to, this is the size of the hole that's supposed to be going all around this, but mine are very small because I was doing it wrong. This is the first time that I've ever had to purposely do uh, eyelets to make them holes. So I'm just going to fudge that up at the end and like camo it to make it look like I did it on purpose. I don't know. But I don't know how much more I have to go before I add the mohair on there. I mean, it's knit on size 10.5 US size and 6.5 millimeter. So these are, it's going to go by fast. I just need to knit on it. My knitting group, there's four girls that are going to Rhinebeck this year. So my goal is to have this finished so one of them can take it and meet Christy and say that they like take credit for it. But uh, knowing me, I don't think I'm going to have it finished that quick. <laughs> but I just kind of, I was talking about things I got in the mail and then I kind of just jumped into whips. But we're going to ignore that I just talked about that and go back to FOs. And I have two technical. Well, I have three, but technically two FOs. So first one that is like a finished, finished, finished FO is a baby blanket. So it is a normal like baby size. Sorry, the color is changing. This is so bright. Like it is a bright, bright white, like brand new printer paper, bright white. So it's probably gonna blow out when I hold it up, but it's just regular baby blanket size. And it is, I mean, you can kind of see it in here. It's just white with a bunch of like gray and green and blue and pink. And I just did there. I didn't follow a pattern. I just cast on three stitches and then no, I cast it on down here. I cast on three stitches and then uh, every other round I increased on each side. So I cast on three and then I increased knit across, increased next row, just knit plain. And then the next one increased, knit, increased. I did that. I only had uh, three balls of this yarn. And I used, I can't think of it right now, but I'll pop the yarn that I use on the screen. I only had three balls of it. So I knit a full ball. And then once I opened the second ball, I only knit halfway. And then I cut it off. So like I made it as wide as it was gonna be. And then I started decreasing. So I did run out of yarn, um, like right, right here. So I had to go and I had to cut the, um, like the tail that I used at the very beginning, I had to tie it on, and so I barely finished it, but I got it finished. So this is for my cousin Sterling. Uh, his wife is due like any day now. So whenever uh, we get wind that the baby is here, I will go and deliver that blanket. So if you guys are watching, uh, pretend you didn't see that and be surprised when I bring it. <laughs> the second and third finished object is just more cowls that I made for Macy made. Again, I'm not going to model these because I am selling them, so they technically aren't mine, but it's just another cowl. These are my classic cowls. Uh, I did one in mustard, and I did one in my favorite, which is called Hudson Bay. Oh, it is like, it looks way darker on camera than it does in real life. Oh, wow. It's just Hudson Bay, so it's got the classic Hudson Bay colors, and I think I'm going to make one for me out of this. I mean, this is what it looks like on, kind of. But yep, I just got two of those done. I'm trying to make myself knit at least one of these cowls a week just so I can slowly build up inventory. But uh, yeah, so now I have three, which is like very sad, but I need to, 
I need to get the ball going. I need to kick myself into gear and start making more Macy made cows. But I've got these two, and I've also got a blue one. So, slowly but surely, I'm getting there. And a hoe, which is half object, so a half finished object, is, uh, you guys, hello, my gaudy. Uh, I just got a notification on the iPad that I'm using to see that my camera is at half battery. I don't think I charged it all the way, so this might be a shorter episode. So last time I was like, oh, I haven't touched it. I just ignored my gaudy. I haven't done anything. Well, I um, got some mojo. I got my gaudy mojo back and I finished a sleeve. Uh, I did not follow the pattern for this. So I made it a three quarter length sleeve. I'm not going to put it on because uh, it is hot, but it's supposed to be a long sleeve. And then I repeat this color work at the bottom, like on the edge of the sleeve, like it would be right here. And then I would do the color work. And then I was over at my parents' house yesterday and I was talking about it. I'm like, you know, I'm really scared that my watch is going to get caught like on these floats for the color work. Like it's going to get caught on there and pull it out of place. And my mom was like, why don't you make a three quarter length? Why didn't I freaking think of that? So that's what I did. <laughs> and I just said, you know what, not doing the color work. I just went ahead and did, I clearly have ends to weave in, but I just went ahead and did the ribbing in the, 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 this color and my contrast color. And it looks super cute. When I put it on, it fits like right here. So it is right before my bracelets and my watch. So all I need to do, like literally all I have to do is just pick up the sleeves and do all of these uh, decreases that I decided to do. <laughs> so you can tell how much I decreased. I mean, I'm glad that I marked my decreases, but I didn't really take notes. So I'm just gonna have to hardcore read my knitting when I start the other sleeve. But I literally have to pick up the sleeve and knit it and it's done. And it is absolutely finished. I'm gonna try to have this done before I go on the cruise. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but my goal is to have it finished before I go on the boat. But yeah, I just uh, went ahead and finished it and I am super happy, super happy with the way it came out. I knew I was gonna do some alteration to this because I didn't, I was kinda getting sick of it. <laughs> so I knew I was gonna do something that would change like the pattern, but I didn't know it was gonna be three quarter length sleeve. I mean, geez, at Fiberfest, I was convinced by the grocery girls to stop it here and create a crop top out of it. And I was like, no. So I, yeah, I'm easily influenced, but also super stubborn at the same time. <laughs> so yeah, this is my half object. A sleeve is done. And I am very, very, my mindset is I'm already finished with this. So I am ready to be done and cast on another sweater because sis has been bugging me about her zweig. And I need to, I haven't talked to her yet. She's on a cruise right now. So I can't really call her up and be like, hey, I know you're on a boat, but we need to talk about your yarn choice. <laughs> so with her Zweig, my idea was I was gonna knit the whole lace section on the way down to the boat and then knit some socks on the cruise and then like finish the lace on the way home. And then I brought it up to my knitting group. I was like, hey, this is the yarn that I'm gonna use to knit a sweater. And they were like, what? no, bad idea, stop. And I was kind of like, what the heck, what's what? And then I like realized, I'm like, oh yeah, you guys know what you're talking about. So single ply, this, what the gaudy is out of is a single ply yarn. And Caitlin, uh, the mastermind of knitting, she has knit lace out of single ply. You guys can see it, it's like super, um, it's very soft, super soft, but it's single ply, so it doesn't have any twist to it like this one does. Like this has twist. So this is really good like to knit lace out of. Like you can see a difference between these two. But Caitlin had knit a lace shawl out of single ply and it just kind of like meshed all together, turned to like one big carpet piece. And I was about to spend all this time knitting Sis a Zweig, which is like full yoke lace out of single ply. And then Caitlin was like, yo, the second you wash it, it's gonna be like, phew, all that work went out the window for nothing. So I haven't talked to sis yet, but I'm just gonna tell her you need to find another yarn choice to knit this bag with. So I'm hoping that by the time she gets back and by the time we leave, 
uh, we're gonna have enough time to like go down to West 7th so she can pick another skein of yarn and I can cake it up and get it all ready so I can knit it on the way down there. But if not, I've got plenty of other things to knit, let me tell ya! Oh my gosh! <laughs> but I'll talk about those in a second because I still have one more finished object. I am, like, you guys, this episode is just F.O. heavy. It's F.O. crazy. So, I mean, this is also a hoe. So technically I just have these guys that are finished objects. And then my sweater sleeve is a, a hoe. And this is a hoe. But you guys, I put the heel in. I have the heel in my socks. No, the socks aren't done yet. They're still on the needles. <laughs> but I was just tired of waiting and I wanted to go ahead and put the heel in just so I could like try it on and see how long I needed to knit before I went ahead and put my my ribbing on there and you guys I went through my mini skeins sorry if there was a quality change my camera battery died so this is uh, two hours later and it's charged halfway because I didn't want to wait any longer so sorry <laughs> I feel like something like this happens every episode. One day I will get um, technologically savvy. Technology, tech, whatever. Anyways, I was talking about socks. So my brightness is like way off. Let me tinker with the settings real quick. Anyways, I finished my, my heel in these socks and I went mini skein diving and I didn't have any mini skeins that went with this colorway. But I had the leftover yarn from my Zweig, so I went ahead and used that. I mean, these go great together. I'm actually really happy that I discovered that. But I put my heel in, you guys, and it fits. I mean, I did mess it up a little bit. I was following a YouTube video on how to put the heel in, and it's an after true afterthought heel. And, uh, well, first, okay, so Caitlin helped me put it in. Caitlin, the superstar knitter, uh, I'll pop in a video. I was too scared to cut my knitting, so she picked up the two rows that you need to pick up with the one in the middle, and then she picked up one stitch and snipped it for me because I am too big of a baby to cut my knitting for the first time. So she showed me how to do it. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Caitlin. But I went home and I was watching a YouTube video on how to do this, and I was do it was they did it row by row and I was watching row by row and I went to go click play and I don't if you watch some if you watch a YouTube video on your iPhone uh, you can click like I don't have my phone in here but pretend this is a phone play buttons in the middle if you double tap on one side it'll fast forward 10 seconds little fun trick if you guys didn't know that but I had paused it and it was saying to like keep knitting like doing this so like these keep knitting this upwards and then you kitchener the heel together well I accidentally double tapped it and I didn't realize it and it was like now we're going to start kitchenering the heel and so I did it and I missed where they said um, keep knitting for eight more rounds so my heel is eight rounds shorter than what it normally was and I didn't realize it until after and I put I put it on and I was like that's weird I mean it fits totally fine but I'm like, that's weird. And so I was watching the video. I'm like, I don't remember them saying that at all. And then I figured out that I had accidentally double tapped it. But I mean, I'm not going to rip it out. I'm not going to redo it. I'm just going to do the next heel exactly like it. But it works out fine. I'm not going to put it on because I my foot won't fit through these nine inch circulars. But I will pop in a picture of what the heel looks like. So it perfectly sits at the bottom of my foot. So it doesn't actually cover my whole heel. But it's fine because when I'm standing, you can't even see the blue part at all. So it just looks like I have a continuous pattern, which is totally fine with me. But I did my first afterthought heel, and I'm so happy. And I have way, this yarn ball doesn't even look like I've knit anything out of it. I think this is 71. I weighed it the other day. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I believe it's like got 71 grams left. Right now, the sock hits me like right here. And so I think I could knit knee socks if I wanted to and have enough yarn, but I'm not going to. I'm going to cut it off um, probably within like the next three inches maybe, and then just knit the other one. And if I have leftover, I'll make like little baby socks or something. I don't know. But I am so happy I have this. I finished my heel. Thank you, Caitlin, for helping me. You guys, it is pretty much halfway done. So I have a heel. And this is just car knitting. It just lives in the car. 
So that's all I've been doing at Red Lights, is uh, working on my sock, but I'm so happy it's finally done. I mean, it's not done, but the heel is done. So now I don't have to worry about doing the heel. But the video, if you guys are curious that I, um, Caitlin was the one who actually cut it, but she shows it in the video. Um, and it's Amy Florence from Stranded Dye Works. She's got an amazing podcast. She is from the UK and she has a wonderful, wonderful video on how she does her after that heels. So I'll link that up here or over here, wherever that is. Uh, so you guys can click it and watch it if you're going to make uh, after that heel socks. So since that is still like a half whip, I'll just jump right into the regular whips. So I already talked about this being, um, I am all over the place this episode. If you're a new viewer, this episode and last episode are kind of like, blah, but every other one, I normally follow a format, but this is considered a whip, but I already talked about it earlier. I just need to put some time on there, but uh, I haven't yet since I only started it like two days ago. So that is technically a whip. My socks are still a whip, but uh, the road trip, uh, oh, that kind of rhymed a little bit, not really. But this guy, I am two rows away, two rows from doing the brioche section. Um, am I putting it off because I'm terrified of doing brioche? Maybe, strong maybe. But I love the way that this is turning out. Like it's got a little bit of stripes going on and then it's got pooling. I just love this color. And it's t-shirt and jeans. I love this. But yeah, so I wish that uh, it was on a bigger cord, but at the same time I don't because I want to be surprised on how big it is when I take it off the needles. So I am literally two rows away like the pattern I'm actually one and a half away because I'm in the middle of a row. I don't know why I do this, but uh, then I'm going to have to uh, start the brioche and I'm, mm, I've never done brioche. I took a brioche class with Leslie and Robinson and she totally made me confident of doing brioche and like I know how to do it, but that class was like five months ago and I haven't, uh, My neighbors were just outside. I could hear them talking. They're probably like, who, what, what are they doing in that storage unit? <laughs> For those of you that don't know, my uh, podcasting studio is a storage unit. Um, so, they're still out there. Oh well. So yeah, I haven't done brioche in like five months. So I'm kind of scared uh, to go back, but I have all of the videos that I took and I have like this big booklet that she gave us for like helpful tips and tricks. So I should be able to do it. It's just kind of, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> because my, I mean, it's really good if you have like two contrasting colors. So if I would have done brioche in these two, it would be totally fine, but I'm doing it with these two. So the parts where it's white with white, that's gonna be very difficult. But when it, if it's like this together, like if I'm doing a strand of white with on the section where it's like dark blue, totally easy. But um, I feel like this is not a very beginny, beginner friendly color that I'm, I picked. Oh well, I guess I will learn. Oh, here's that stitch marker I couldn't find, yay. Um, I guess I will learn my lesson when I get there. But yeah, I'm literally two rows away from having to do brioche and the brioche is the last section and then I will do this like cool little border and I'll be finished with it but it's getting pretty deep like this is the top part and like where these are like that's how like it's gonna be a deep shawl and it's only gonna grow after blocking so I'm excited to see how this is done so I don't know if I'll get to learning the brioche before or after the boat but we'll see okay so the last whip I am working on it's kind of like making me sad. This is the bag I love. Alex got it for me for my birthday. It's the Della Q bag. Oh, <laughs> um, this, you guys. So I don't, why did I do that? There's a fan blowing on me right now and it got all over my face. Oh, but it smells so good. So if you remember last episode I was talking about, I was knitting on my road trip shawl in Bath and Body Works and I found the marshmallow pumpkin latte spread. <laughs> oh my God, that's in my mouth now. But like I just kept talking and like the particles were still in the air and this fan, right? Like the air conditioning thing just blew it right into my mouth. It doesn't taste like a marshmallow pumpkin latte, I will tell you that. But I sprayed this on my knitting because I thought it smelled so good. And Alex's mom was watching the podcast and she heard it and she got it for me. 
So thank you. Now all of my knitting smells exactly like that. So I'm pretty sure the fans sprayed it onto these. So if you um, buy one of those, it might smell like marshmallow pumpkin latte. But that's not a bad thing because it smells amazing. So thank you, Tracy, for <laughs> listening to the podcast and getting me that. But what I was saying is I'm kind of disappointed with the way that this is turning out and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. But if you guys remember, on my birthday, I went to West 7th Wool. Well, it wasn't on my birthday, but I took myself to West 7th Wool like three days before my birthday for their big sale. And I bought a skein of yarn for me, from me, to me, from me, for my birthday. And it was this skein of yarn called Toxic Unicorn by Lemonade Shop. I'll pop a picture of what it looks like in the skein. So this is in skein form, and then this picture is what it looks like. Unskeined up, you see how bright and neon and colorful it is? Well, when I caked it up, it looks like this. On camera, it looks great. Like, I wish it looked like this in real life, but it doesn't. It's very dull. And this, I was like, oh, huh, it looks a lot lighter than what it looked like in the skein. And then I started knitting with it, and it looks even lighter when I'm knitting. Like, I'm, I mean, it's still really pretty, but I was just expecting it to be this, like, bright neon, like, super happy colors. And it's kind of just, like, muted, like, Care Bear almost. Which, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just not what I was expecting, you know? So, like, this is, I mean, again, it looks, like, super bright on camera. But it's just totally, you can kind of see, yeah, this is what it looks like in real life. Like, back here, where the lights aren't as harsh on it, this doesn't, like, that's too bright. But this is what it looks like and I mean it's really like I really like it don't get me wrong but I'm just kind of like Urgh. like you know when you like there's a new drink that's promoted at like a drive-thru like say Sonic like there's a new like Oreo cookie dough something blast and you're like oh my god that sounds so good and you get it and you're like me it tastes okay that's kind of like what this is like I was so excited that it was like bright neon like wah and then I caked it up and started knitting with it, and it's like, mm, like it's not, it's very, if that makes any sense. But I put it on, like on camera it looks okay, um, but I held it up against my face. So like in non really big box lights, it looks completely different. I mean, right now it just kind of looks like a pastel onion ring sitting on top of my head, but it's like, <laughs> It makes me look sick not my colors so I'm just like kind of like do I un like do I rip it all out and cake it up and like sell this like de stash it because it's not what I was expecting or do I finish knitting it and like put a pom-pom on it and put it in like Christmas gift pile and then just find somebody at Christmas time and be like oh yeah that'll look good on them or like I don't know what to do with it or should I just save it finish it, knit it, put a pom-pom on it, and then once I hit, like, 1,000 subscribers, like, use it as a giveaway, like, be like, hey, thanks for watching my podcast, um, I knit you a hat type of thing. I think I might do that. If I can't, like, if I finish it. Yeah, I think I might, would, okay, let me, let me know. Would you guys wear, if I finished knitting this, it's Lemonade Shop Toxic Unicorn, it was not cheap, if I finished knitting this and made, like, a complete hat with the pom-pom and everything, would you guys want it as a giveaway prize? Like, once I hit 1,000 subscribers, I'm gonna do a giveaway, so subscribe so I can hit 1,000. But if I, like, once I hit that, should I use this as a giveaway? Like, would you want a hand knit hat from me to give to you along with other things? But I think, like, should I just save that? Like, would you guys want that? Or should I just find somebody to give it to for Christmas if I finish it by then? But I think, I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, a giveaway prize, that might not be bad. Because I love this yarn. Like, I loved it in the skein. But, like, the more, like, once I caked up with it and, like, once I started knitting with it, it's just not what I was expecting it to be. Like, I still love it, but it's just not the yarn that I thought it was, if that makes sense. Like, I don't know. But if you guys think that's a good idea, like, if you would want a hand-knit hat for me for a giveaway prize... Tell me in the comments. Let me know if that's uh, something that you'd be interested in because then I will definitely Then I would have a purpose to knit it because I haven't been knitting on this because it's kind of been like hmm, I'm not gonna be able to wear it 
And then I took myself out of the mindset like, hey, you don't only have to knit for you type of thing. So let me know if you guys would want that as a giveaway prize. Because then I'll keep knitting it. Okay, so that is pretty much all of the knitting that I've been doing. But I do have a lot of upcoming knits. So if you guys know who Hoagie Locatelli is, Hoagie, Hoagie, however you say it. Uh, Hoagie Locatelli is this really insanely talented knitwear designer. She is just crazy, crazy talented and she creates beautiful patterns and that she's always, like if you look at her on like the Ravelry, like the top 20, 99% of the time, one of Hoagie's patterns is on there. But she's doing this thing, it's called, I have it written down, I wanna make sure I don't mess it up. Hashtag Hoagie Fall Cow 2019. So what that is, is she does it every year. This is her eighth year doing it, but it's the first year that I'm doing it. So you sign up. The signups are from August 15th to August 30th. All the information is on her Instagram page if you follow her, or it's on her Ravelry. So go, if you want to sign up for it, the signups end August 30th, August 15th to August 30th. So go sign up if you want to. And uh, right now she's also giving away 25% off on her patterns on Ravelry. So you use the co coupon code Hoki Fall Cal 2019 and you get 25% off her patterns. And I'm not really sure why there's a cutoff, like to sign up to join the knit along. It maybe it's more intense than I think it is, but I signed up, I'm in there. So you guys, if you wanna be in a Hoki knit along, you have to knit one of her patterns. Go sign up, because signups are limited. So what I'm gonna knit is the hipster cowl, and it's just, you knit a long, 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 long rectangle, and then you seam the edges, and it's a big cowl. And I'm gonna knit it out of um, yarn that I got from Fiberfest that I just kind of bought to make a cowl with, but I never, like, I didn't have a pattern in mind. So now I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna use that, and I'm gonna enter it in this knit along, and I'm gonna do that. So that starts on September 1st. So you cast on September 1st, and I'm just like, it's the 21st right now like I leave for the the boat in like 18 17 60 days something like that it's in the teens and I have to knit like so like oh my I am like uh, I've got so many things to cast on so many things finished like do I need to be doing this knit along yes because I'm a glutton for punishment so I'm gonna be knitting the hipster cowl out of my fiber seed yarn in the wake up colorway. I didn't bring it because I didn't think about it, but you'll see it on the next episode when I finish it. Hopefully I finish it. Like you can knit any of her patterns. I really, I've been looking at the lemongrass pullover. I am like, I really, really like that. And I've never discovered that. I went ahead and bought it cause it was 25% off, but like I really, really like it. I wouldn't knit it out of the lemongrass color because that color makes me look sick. But I was thinking I could do that in like a dark gray. If you guys have knit the lemongrass, like it's a turtleneck, but it's got a cable going down the front and then it's um, like open on the sides and it's closed by buttons. So if you guys have knit that and you like wearing it, let me know. Cause I wanted it something with a turtleneck. I'm not gonna do it for the knit along, heck no. I'll probably wait and do that later. But I just, I saw that pattern and I was like, oh, I like it. But for Hoagie's Knit Along, I'm doing the Hipster Cowl, so if you guys are doing the Knit Along and you're also doing the Hipster Cowl, let me know. Or if you've knit it and you like it, don't tell me if you didn't like it because I already made my mind up that I'm knitting it and I don't want to get discouraged. But if you have knit it before and you actually like like it and wear it, let me know because I'm like I'm very eager and I'm excited to do that. But I've also got to finish the Duchess and Dragons. I've got to start the Hoagie Cowl. I'm also going to cast on a pair of socks to knit on the boat. I just... I don't know where this idea in my head, oh, you can cast on this, 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 and you can finish it by this time, and you can do all this. I'm gonna see if I can do it. I'm definitely going to knit something on the way down to get on the boat, and it's either going to be the hipster cowl, or it's gonna be Sissus Vig, one or the other, depending on how far I am on the hipster cowl. I might be able to put it away and knit on Sissus Vig. If not, then it's gonna be hipster cowl all the way down there. So I can actually keep entering into the knit along and like win prizes and all that stuff. Um, but I'm on the boat. I don't want to bring, um, I don't want to bring a big project. So I'm not going to bring the cowl or the Zweig or anything on the boat. I'm going to bring a little pair of socks and you might be like, uh, why don't you cast on your second sock for this and like finish, finish your Vegas socks. Like, hello. No, because these are my like, my car knitting socks. I want to have a pair of socks that I can be like, 
every time I wear them, be like, oh my gosh, yeah, I'm putting these on. I remember everything about the cruise. Like, I was knitting these during that. Like, my Tecumseh, I, every time I look at that, Alex was playing Red Dead Redemption 3. If you haven't played it, you will fall in love with Arthur Morgan. <laughs> Alex played the whole entire game while I was, so what we do, he sits on the couch, I sit next to him, he does, like, video games on the TV, I'm knitting, and I watch him do that. So it's, like, we're both doing the same, like, I don't, I don't know how to describe it, but for me, my whole entire Tecumseh was knit while he was playing Red Dead. So every time I sat on that couch and was watching him play Red Dead, I was knitting on the Tecumseh. So now it's like, this sweater is an Arthur Morgan tribute. Totally not, but like, see, every time I wear that, I think of like Red Dead, so I think of that. So every time I wear these new socks that I'm knitting for the cruise, which I haven't cast on, I don't even know what yarn I'm gonna use yet, but I will be able to think like, oh my gosh, I knit these on the cruise. I remember how much fun that was. Like, it's kind of, um, I don't know, like if your little kid draws a picture while you're at the dentist office and you hang it on the fridge, like, aren't you gonna remember that's a dentist office picture? I, that's probably a terrible example, but you probably know what I'm talking about. So like, if you're doing something in the moment of like this bigger scheme, when you're finished with it, you look back at it and you're like, oh yeah, I did that during that time. That's what I'm doing with the socks. So before you guys go, finish your socks before you cast something new on. No. I'm not going to. <laughs> so I'm going to cast on the cruise socks. And then after that, like, it's just, oh my gosh, it's October already. And I got to knit something for Alex's birthday, which is October 17th. And then in my dad's birthday is the 25th. And it's like, oh, what are we going to knit him? And then it's like, oh my God, it's Christmas already. Ah! So I am, this is probably not the best time to get cast on itis and cast on everything, but... I got it and I'm casting everything on and I don't know what I'm thinking but that's what's happening <laughs> and um, you guys left me some feedback on my how to how I wash and block my sweaters did you guys like that like I want to know like is it helpful if I post videos like that because it was really fun to make I had my um, tripod like our kitchen is it has like an indented part of the ceiling so it's like flat ceiling and then in the kitchen it's like like it's higher up just in a little section it's got like rope lights and like the actual lights hang down from that and so I had my tripod attached to the edging of it and my like camera obviously it wasn't I'll pop in a picture but the camera's not on there because I was using that to take the picture but it was over it hanging on top of my sink total dumb move because if that would have fallen my camera and my tripod would have gone directly into water so, I mean, other than that, it was really fun to make. So if you guys, like, if that helped you learning how I wash my sweaters, not blocking them, that was just like laying them flat to dry type of thing. But when I finish my gaudy, I'll actually do like an in-depth video on like how I shape it and how I block it and pin it and everything. So if you want to see that, let me know. But if there's any like other helpful like tips and tricks, like with knitting, like if you want to know like how I make these, or if you want to know like certain things, how I knit, how I learned to knit type of thing. Like, if those helpful videos, like, in between podcasts, because I know normal people post podcasts, like, weekly or bi-weekly, and I'm kind of, like, you get one at the beginning of the month, and you get one towards the end type of thing. So if, it, if you guys like having one in the middle of it, let me know. Like, give me some ideas if you want to know how to do certain things with knitting or how I do this. Because it was fun to make that. And, uh, yeah, so my I'm looking down here, and the battery symbol is in the red again. I don't know why. I knew I was podcasting and I didn't charge that. Oh, before I forget, this. I was planning on talking about it last podcast, but I completely forgot. It is my wrist ruler that I got at West 7th Wool. So the brand is I Love Handles. I don't understand why that's the name of it, but it is just a leather um, ruler that you can wear as a bracelet. And it's got centimeters and inches. So if you're on another metric system, you might they might have another type that doesn't have inches and centimeters, but uh, I use inches and centimeters, so this is the one. And I've actually used it. Like, seriously, I've taken it off and I've used it, and it's been handy, and I love it so much. And I totally forgot to talk about it last time, but now I remembered. So the wrist ruler, I'll leave a link to it below so you can get one. But, uh, yeah, this is going to be the last time you see me for, like, the next four or five weeks. And hopefully I'll have a tan next time and I won't be this pasty peachy white color 
and Sterling will have had the baby, and the baby blanket will be gone, and hopefully I'll have a picture of what the baby looks like with the blanket, I don't know, or fingers crossed I'll have a finished object. But the next time I podcast, I promise you, it won't be as spacey, I'll charge my camera battery, <laughs> but if you guys want to stay updated with me, because it will be a long time before I get to podcast again, follow me on Instagram, because I will post stories, like, about the cruise, leading up to the cruise, what I'm going to take, what I'm knitting on it, um, my Instagram is Mace of Skeins, so I'll pop that on the screen, so you can follow me on there, also, if you want to help me reach 1,000 subscribers, so I can actually, my goal is to have that by next year's Fiber Fest. But if you want me to knit that hat for you guys, then subscribe. Send it to your friends. Have them subscribe. My neighbors are back outside. I think they're like bringing their groceries in because I can hear them climbing up the stairs. So I'm going to stop before they come and knock on the door. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, thank you for updating me about how dangerous it is to put yarn scraps in birdhouses. I feel terrible. I'm glad I didn't actually let birds live in there. But uh, yeah, if you want to see what's coming up next, Follow me on Instagram, subscribe, add me on Ravelry. All the info will be right here. And I will see you when I get back from the cruise. Okay, see you guys later. Have a great day. Happy knitting. Good.